Hey everyone and welcome to a, another video and another game. Today we're going to look at a game between Jan the Pommer Sheep against Magnus Carlsen, but I believe this is the first time they ever played. This was played in the year 2002 in Peniscola in Spain, and according to my database it is actually the first game they ever played against one another. So I believe they're around 11 years old in this game, and it's actually really uh, quite a strong game from both sides, uh, quite positional and strategic. And even at this young age, Jan and Pomlishy was actually rated 2306 ELO and Magnus was rated 2214 ELO. So incredibly strong already at this young age. So let's begin. The Pomlishy was playing with white, Magnus had black. He began with 1e4. Magnus played knight to f6, the Alakine's defense. White played e5, there was knight to d5 followed by knight to f3 from white, with black playing d6, and white now playing d4, putting his pawn in the centre. There was takes on e5, and the knight recaptured, with black playing g6, and now white playing bishop to c4. Both sides developing rapidly. c6 defends the knight on d5. Knight c3 comes, once again attacking d5, and the bishop now comes in, developing another piece, supports, the d5 square. It's a bit of an awkward place to put your bishop, um, but this seems to be theory. White now castled kingside. Knight to d7 from Magnus was played. Queen to f3. Now black doesn't really want to take on e5 in this position because if knight takes, the pawn will recapture and after a move like bishop to g7, white gains a bit of an advantage here with moves like rook to d1. Now now they've got four pieces eyeing up the d5 square. You can obviously give up the e5 square with bishop takes e5 here, but then comes a move, bishop takes d5, bishop takes, knight takes, c takes, and at the end of it you can play it with, take with the queen or the rook, probably rook is better. Um, and yeah, white's already developed his king and would have a better position. Moves like bishop h6 may come, stopping black from castling. So instead of uh, taking on e5, uh, Magnus just develops bishop g7. Now two pieces hit the e5 square. So rook e1 defends uh, e5, black just castled kingside, and the queen went to g3 for white, again supporting the e5 square. And Magnus now decided to take, because knight takes e5, pawn takes e5, and a lot of trades with knight takes c3, queen takes, bishop takes bishop, and queen takes bishop. A very good position, uh, all in all, for black to be in. If you're black, uh, you've usually got a slight disadvantage in the opening because you're uh, obviously a move behind. So getting in equal position like this uh, is very good uh, out of the opening. I'm sure like young Magnus must have been very happy with this position. He played a very strong move next as well, queen to d5, threatening to trade queens and also attacking the e5 pawn. Nepo didn't want to take and swap queens, so he defended with queen to e2, moves his queen away. And Magnus just improved his position. He played rook a to d8, gaining control of the d-file, which makes a lot of sense. But now bishop g5 comes in. Bit of an issue for black. The pawn's attacked on e7, and it's also pinned because of this rook on d8. It's not a big issue. Magnus finds a really good move, actually. Queen to e6. Defends the pawn on e7, and also stops the e5 pawn from moving any squares forward. Queen to e3 from Nepo. He's threatening to play and control bishop to h6. His queen also attacks the pawn on a7. For this reason, Magnus just played b6. Makes a lot of sense to put your pawns on dark squares in this position, just to blunt the bishop. a4 from white, though, so trying to crack open this uh, queen side from black. Magnus played rook to d5. Hits e5 three times. Forces white to defend with bishop to f4. And Magnus played queen to f5, attacking the c2 pawn. And now Nepo does offer an exchange queens with queen to e4. Magnus said, no thank you though, I'll just move my queen back to d7 and control the d-file. c3 was now played. Now I believe this was played because perhaps white wanted to play e6 at some point and he didn't want any bishop takes b2s occurring. Magnus just tripled on the d-file though. This is really good for black. Um, black is actually slightly better in this position. I did wonder what would happen if white played e6 in this position because it was quite interesting. 
Um, but I think black gains the advantage because there's queen takes e6, queen takes, f takes, rook takes e6, g5, which hits the bishop, forcing it backwards. And after rook to d1, it looks like there's a back rank mate, but whites can always play rook to e1. Uh, but black does gain the advantage with rook takes a1. Rook takes a1 and h5. Uh, Freddy's push his pawn. So after h4, takes, takes, and rook to d2. Uh, rook to b1 from white to defend. This is quite a long variation, but after bishop to f6, takes, takes. Uh, it's probably an equal position. Not really sure why it would have wanted this out of the opening. So for this reason, maybe he wanted to go in for e6 because he realized there was a lot of trades coming up. Uh, so back to the game. Instead of playing e6, Nepo played h3. So now maybe he is preparing to play um, e6 because if there's any h5 ideas that we've looked at in that variation, the bishop could drop back to h2. It also gives the king a safe square as well if there's any back rank ideas. So Magnus played queen to e6 to avoid the pawn going forward. Queen to e2 was played and rook to d3. So black's actually controlling a lot of squares with this rook. a5 was played by white though, so it's trying to crack open this queen side forcing black to make a decision, and Magnus decided just to push his pawn forward with b5. Perhaps though a weakening move, because now this pawn is really isolated on a7. You have bishop to e3 ideas. And this is very in keeping with the engine alpha 0, actually. Uh, Nepo just played a6. And alpha 0 is uh, the Google DeepMind engine that usually likes to launch its pawns forward really far up the board, and it causes black a lot of issues. The c5 from Magnus and queen to e4 is a very interesting move from white. Maybe threatening to play uh, queen to b7 and harass this pawn on a7. Now, here's where Magnus went wrong. He should have played this move, rook to d5. It stops the queen infiltrating because it just blocks it. Um, and it's very difficult for white to play a move here. The best move, or one of the moves given, is bishop to g3. But after h5, again, white's really struggling for a decent move. Um, because the pawn's attacked on a6 by the queen. So you can't really move this rook away. And also this pawn is heavily ganged up on as well. And you can't really move any of your pieces away from it. So let's see after f3, you can play rook to d2. This is one of the engine lines with rook to e2. Takes, takes. Bishop takes e5, giving up the pawn. Bishop takes... Queen takes and black giving up the b5 pawn with king going to g7. But again, this is heavily favours black's side and advantage black from uh, stockfish. So Magnus probably should have played rook to d5 as we just discovered. He instead played queen to d5, offering a trade of queens. And here's where black started to go a bit wrong. So there's queen takes queen, rook takes queen and rook to a5, so attacking b5, and all of a sudden um, black's position looks quite weak. Magnus did play the best move though, he played c4. The rook defends the b5 pawn, and Nepo now just gets his other pieces into the game. King to f1, it's gonna be an end game, it's always good to centralize your king. Magnus played e6, and now it's bishop to e3. As we discussed, this pawn on a7 becomes quite a bit of a problem. Black's forced to defend it with the rook. Rook comes to d7. And Nepo now blocks the position up. Bishop to d4. Blunts these two rooks on the d-file. Again, though, this is a very even position. Uh, Magnus played bishop to f8. So getting his uh, bishop into the game, probably preparing bishop to c5 in this position. But Nepo plays rook to b1. He's preparing b3. Uh, just crash, crack open this uh, queen side on the white squares. Now here, Magnus should have played bishop to h6. Gain more control over the uh, dark squares. And after king to e2, he could have played f6. Takes e5. Bishop to e3. Takes, takes, and e4. Um, this is a dead-drawn game, most likely due to a perpetual check that the engines discovered. Uh, but this looked really nice for black. And um, yeah, so bishop h6 would have been a nice move. Um, instead, Magnus has played the slightly weaker bishop to e7, and this uh, is mainly bad because now white can crash in with b3. The point is now if you take on b3, rook takes b3, 
white's protecting all his dark square pawns, but now this white square becomes weak on b5, and white's going to win a pawn in an endgame. And again, this a7 pawn is also incredibly weak. So you can't take on b3. Instead, Magnus played bishop to d8, attacking the rook. Uh, but uh, white just retreats it back to a2. Again, if you take on b3 in this position, this just rook takes b3, and white will still win the pawn on b5 by doubling. Um, so after rook to a2, young Magnus decided to sacrifice an exchange. He played rook takes d4. Um, white just simply took c takes d4, and Magnus played c3. So he's probably gambling on the fact he might be able to play b4 here and bishop to b6, and maybe even win the d4 square, in which case black would probably be doing okay. Um, but after c3, Nepo played b4, stops these two pawns connecting together, and this position looks really bad for black now. Magnus played bishop to g5, and white played rook to d1 to protect his d4 square. Instead of bishop g5, though, I was wondering why Magnus didn't just play rook takes d4 in this position. Perhaps he was worried about rook to c2. Um, after rook to c4 to protect the pawn, white maybe I'll just play bishop, rook to b3, sorry and hoover up this c3 square. So maybe that's why he didn't play rook takes d4 straight away. Instead he played bishop g5. Um, Nepo played rook to d1 to protect his d4 square, and Magnus played rook to c7, defending his c3 pawn. I did wonder why Magnus didn't play bishop to d2 in this position, um, but after bishop d2, white can just simply play rook takes d2, give him back the exchange sacrifice, followed by pawn takes, rook takes, and after rook to c7, just play d5, takes takes, and white's a pawn up in a superior rook end game. Um, I also looked at here, why can't black just play rook to d5 and block up the position, but white's too fast, he has king e2, king f8, King e3 supporting his uh, d4 pawn. After king e7, there's rook c2 infiltrating the c file. I thought king d7 may be able to hold the position, but after h4, king to d8, black just has to leave their king in this position, and rook c5. It's looking very bad for black because white will just take on d5 and use their king to, to get into the king's side position. And also white has an extra pass pawn um, on the DRC file. So Nepo is forced to block it actually with rook to c2. Bishop to e7 was played by Magnus, threatening the b4 pawn. Um, and now Nepo comes up with a really good move. I wonder if you can spot this move actually, it's really strong. I didn't actually see it when I was looking. So maybe pause the video and see what you would play in this position. It's uh, worth looking at for your end game technique. So Nepo played the very nice move, d5. The point being is, if e takes d5, there's rook takes d5, bishop takes b4, and rook takes b5, followed by rook to c4 and king e2. And this is an easy win now for white. Let's say king to f8, now just comes rook, uh, king to d3, sorry, attacking the rook, rook's attacking the bishop, and this pawn is also attacked twice as well. Also, white may be able to just play rook to b7 next and win the a7 pawn. A very bad position. So after d5, Magnus played bishop takes b4 instead. Uh, but now comes a very strong move, d6. Hits the rook. Rook c8 was played and there was rook to b1. And white won the game from here because Magnus resigned it. So why did Magnus resign the game here? Well, rook c4 is one of the better moves. Uh, but now just comes d7, forcing black to play bishop to e7, and then just comes rook takes b5, and this is pretty much uh, game over, because white's going to threaten to play rook to b8, and queen the pawn, picking up a free piece. So this was the first game played between Nipponishi and Magnus Carlsen. Obviously we know both players went on to play in a fabulous world championship match, so it's quite interesting to see how they both began. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. I hope it improves your chess exponentially. And I'll see you in another one. Thank you.